Hello and welcome to another episode of Zero to Hero in Fusion 360. Today we're going to be making a sharpener and we're going to learn a couple of really important things such as using a canvas, creating lofts, cutting and basically a couple of other useful things as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So to begin with, we're going to go to the surface tab and go to the insert and choose canvas. All right. And then we're going to choose an image, which is basically the image of the model, which we want to build. So in this case, it's going to be the image of a sharpener. The image of the sharpener will be in the description and I'm going to insert it from my computer right now. So as you can see, this is the image which I have and this will be available in the description and I will choose a plane here along which I want it to be oriented. We can again scale this or um, we can even move it around or just scale it up or down by a bit by pressing this handle and or, or you can directly type a value there. You could again move it in the X in the X Y plane only. I don't think you can move it in the Z direction right now and you can also just move it freely and control Z if you don't want to have it there and well that's just going to remove the entire thing you're going to have to do it again so insert canvas insert from my computer and choose that sharpener right choose this plane and I think we're going to go with the scale as one and there's a really cool feature here which is known as calibration basically which enables you to calibrate the image which you want to draw with the real life size so we're just going to look at that real quick. So you can just click on this and right click on this sharpener in the browser and choose the calibrate option over here and then go into top view. So what we do here is we basically choose two points and tell the program that is we tell fusion how far apart those two points will be in real life and then it will basically rescale it accordingly. All right. So I'm going to choose a point around here. Or, or maybe around here and another one over here and so I actually measured sh uh, sharpeners uh, in real life a little while back and two centimeters is definitely a, a good value we could even make it a little bit larger because most sharpeners of this design tend to be around 2.5 centimeters in length so I'm just going to type that in here 2.5 centimeters and hit enter and you will see it will basically scale the image accordingly all right so and this image is going to be our framework or our skeleton along which we're going to draw. All right. So now let's start with a sketch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a sketch which traces the outline of this sharpener. And then we're going to use that to create the complete 3D body of the sharpener and then add all the details like this hole in which the pencil would go in, the screw hole and the blade. So let's get started. Right. So that's a sketch. I'm going to use a line here and try to get it really close to the actual line as you zoom in you will get to see more and more grid lines so i have zoomed in quite a bit here as you can see and maybe even some more if required but i mean it's honestly not you don't need to be picture perfect precise it just needs to be like a decent looking image that's it it doesn't need to be perfect and yeah if you want to draw along straight lines have this option snap here turned on then it will snap it to straight lines and and to basically the nearest grid point and I think I'm going to stop here then yeah so now you can see it's going to try to draw another line from here we don't want that we want to draw one from here so I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard you can use line then again just click on this and then start again and I'm going to keep it here now I can continue because I don't want to uh, start from a random point it's a continuous drawing now so that and again we have to zoom in here to get the exact position so do that then click here again zoom out if you want and make sure that that blue line up there is visible so that you know that it's in the same line as the previous part of the sharpener was so that it doesn't go awry and then again continue drawing um, if you want to move you now is the best time to have a mouse because then you can easily move it using the middle mouse button and drag to move to a different view so that you can bring everything which you need to see back into view and I'm going to stop this right here and again drag this all the way down here. Make sure that it's in the same line as the other one which you had drawn and right now it is because it's I had made it on a grid line so this will be fine. Alright now I can again hit escape and that will stop. 
All right, so I have created this profile. Now you can see here, this is a bit of a curve and we have made it a perfectly sh uh, sharp edge. If you want to add that, you can either use a fillet or when you're drawing itself, you can use a tangent curve. I'm going to show you the fillet. All right, so you have to bring it here and then choose the radius. You can just drag it around and get it and make it what you want it to be and then hit enter. Or if you want to add more of them, then you can just zoom out using again, I'm using the scroll wheel, drag it and using the middle mouse button and then choose this one that's going to choose the exact same radius as we had chosen there so that's again going to be 0 0.07 centimeter or um, 0.7 millimeter whatever and then hit enter to finish the fillet all right so that's going to create this kind of a shape now maybe you may even want to add a fillet here and here and again it's pretty much the exact same thing just click that and you'll have to choose the right value as you can see, this has taken 0 0.017 because this uh, corner is quite small. You can make it larger, but that's just going to do this weird thing. So keep it something very um, close to the actual drawing and then it'll look more realistic as well. Right. And same thing on this side. Apply it here and 0 0.02 seems all right. And as you can see here, this line is not perfectly in line with the image. So if you want to move that, just click this point and drag it, right? So it'll move it around with every other, all the remaining geometry intact. It won't really affect it, but this is not recommended because it can sometimes lead to unexpected results. So I wouldn't recommend it. Like for example, if you move this line, it's no longer in line with that one. So not a good idea. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. All right. And yeah, that's that. Now do the same thing for the bottom. Use a line and we will again. Now we will try to make it in one continuous stretch. So I'm going to start from this point and end at the same location on the other side. So to here approximately, maybe just zoom in a bit. That's not yet it. Maybe till here, right? So that's it. Then zoom out a bit so that you can again see the rest of it in view because it doesn't make sense to really have half of it in view. All right. I think that's fine, but I'm going to zoom in to make sure again, not exactly. So another grid point up, this looks all right. We can move it probably later if required. This seems fine. And then we move it to the top, zoom out, drag using the middle mouse button and make sure that it's again in the same line as the other one. Now it's not going to show you a blue line. So you're going to have to really try and get this right without messing it up, right? So I think around this location, but just to be sure, I'm going to draw a point here and then I'm going to try to move it to that side and see if it still makes a straight line. It does say 90 degrees. So I think this is a perfectly straight line. I think we've hit it right on target. It's perfectly in line. And so I'm going to escape and, and I think we're done. So we have made both the sides. However, this was done completely by eye. It would have been a much better idea to have chosen a grid point to start that line and uh, or maybe one line below like over here. And that makes it perfectly exact and doesn't leave out any room for error. Right. So let's fillet this. We'll do that. And here as well. And it'll use the exact same radius 0 0.075 centimeters and hit enter. I mean, in fact, you might want to use the exact same radius as we had used above, which is 0 0.07 by the way. So consider that because you want it to look symmetrical ish at least, and that will set both of them to 0 0.07 now. All right. So that's that. Now to build this, um, wavy portion, we're going to use a spline. All right. So now the spline will actually come in handy. So yeah, zoom in right here and begin. So start from here, draw a point randomly. Again, now it might be a good idea to turn off the snap tool because that's just going to come in your way rather than actually help you out right now. So yeah, choose a point here and it can actually, it can intersect right now. Like for example, this is currently intersecting, but as you drag it around, it will basically morph into shape, all right? Because this is a spline and it, it basically follows the points at which you have placed the it's a fit points blank, so it follows the points where you uh, tell it to, right? So that's that. Then here, basically go for the tips and the valleys in each of these bumps. 
gonna take a bit of time because there are quite a few. So I'm probably gonna skip over this part. All right, now we've come to the end. I think we can make do with this. I have just pressed escape, which basically cancelled out the entire thing. Don't do the same thing as I did. Uh, when you're doing it, press enter and do not press escape because otherwise it will basically erase your entire thing. All right. So I'm just going to do it again right now real quick. Right. So now I hit enter and not escape. And that gives me the perfect set of splines all right now this point and the that is basically this entire line and the one at the bottom are not in the same line this is a line with the grid line whereas the top one isn't so if you want to edit that just drag this and try and snap it to the nearest line it will be quite hard to do since we've already drawn this line and so don't make that mistake in the first place ideally but in case you do, then you always have this option to basically edit it. Also, you may notice that some of our points do not look quite right. That is, they do not, uh, they intersect the actual material of the sharpener. So if you want to edit that, just click on that point. You'll see a tangent line. Just drag that tangent by its handles to shape your um, line the way you want it. All right. And then click outside it to basically remove that um, that green circle. And similarly, you can drag around points itself in case you don't like the, the place where they are located. And then you can basically add some final touches like moving the points and getting the tangents in the right locations. Like this one doesn't look quite right. This one as well. And when you're done with all of these, then you will basically be having a perfect um, you know, sharpener ready. Right. I think I just messed that up. I am going to undo that. Yeah, let's undo that because that would result in a slanted line and let's just drag this line and move it perfectly in line with the rest of the sharpener. All right. And that looks better. Now, I really hope that this and that are in the same line and that looks okay. Now to, now what we want to do is we basically want to um mirror this this side which you have just drawn onto the opposite side all right so ideally for this you wouldn't uh you would want to have your top and your bottom lines equal in length which is probably not the case for me since i have used um since i have messed up the positions of these points but please try to get that right and in case it doesn't then you'll be able to see there'll be a clear gap between the points where they connect with this and and, and that so let's actually do that. We're going to go to create and then to mirror. All right. And you need something or you'll need a line which you want to mirror and you need a mirror along which you want to mirror them. That is, you want a mirror line. And right now we do not have one. So I'm going to press cancel and first draw a line right along the middle. That is starting from around here to the origin, just to you to be used as a mirror line and hit escape. Then, um, Again, create, mirror, choose what you want to mirror. That is this line for us in our case. Do not press the points. Make sure you're choosing the blue line. And then for the mirror line, click this. And you should now see a complete mirrored line over here. And as you can see, this and that do not connect. But at the bottom, I believe they will connect perfectly. Now, even at the bottom, they do not. So we hit OK. And then what we do is we basically move this so that they perfectly coincide right now you can turn on snap so that that does so that it gets uh snapped on perfectly and if that doesn't work then you can just drag the points individually i'm just going to move it back to where it was before and then drag the points you need to zoom in real close to get that right and i'm going to do that similarly at the top this will basically ensure that you have a closed image and without a closed uh, sketch, you will not be able to draw. I mean, you will not be able to extrude. All right. So please make sure that you do this. 
And so that gives us a closed sketch. As you can see now, this is a closed sketch be because of which it's now getting highlighted in white whenever I'm mousing over it. And then you can hit finish sketch. All right. So this is the complete sharpener's body. Now what we're going to, okay, we've forgotten to remove this line, which you can just do now. You can just click that line and hit delete and it'll get rid of it. All right. So this is our sharpener's um, outline. Now we're going to basically um, extrude this downwards so as to get the, um, so as to get a solid body. So I'm going to say create, sorry, just hit extrude. You can even press E and I'm going to extrude this by 0.7 centimeters because that's about the height of a sharpener that I have been referring to. 0.8 also looks okay. In fact, some of some sharpeners are as tall as two centimeters or three centimeters in height. Um, 0.7 centimeters is just fine. You could even make it 0.8 if you wanted. All right. So I'm going to go with 0.8 probably because it looks better. All right. And more, um, accurate to this particular design. Now what we want to do is we want to create the hole. Now remember that the hole is going to be on the side, which doesn't have that uh, giant cavity at the top. I mean, which doesn't have that big opening. So yeah, we're going to create a sketch on this surface that is on this front facing surface. And well, we're going to draw a circle there. Make sure that your circle is more or less in line with the, the, with the back part because you're going to draw a small hole over there as well. And you want this circle and that circle to basically line up when you draw them. All right. So I am again going to uh, go approximately into front view, but I also want us, I also somewhat want a view of the front side so that I know where to draw it. All right. And try to make it as straight as possible and start drawing. All right. Make sure you start somewhere in the middle. You don't want to start somewhere at the top and have a circle that's like this. So, um, yeah. And I think around 0.6 or 0.7 would be a good size for this. 0.8 is too big. 0.6 or 0.7 is the best idea because that's about the diameter of a pencil as well. It's a little bit bigger. A, a pencil is generally um, 0.5 centimeters in diameter. Right. So maybe 0.6 is fine. We'll go with that. Right. And hit enter. That gives you this circle and we're going to create the same, a similar thing on the other side. Um, actually, I think this circle needs to be more centered. So I'm just going to undo this and make another circle. Um, okay. So let's go center diameter circle again. And again, just try slowly moving it into a slightly more top oriented view, zoom in as close as possible and ensure that your circle center is right at the center of that particular hole. All right. Um, cause that's how this works. So I think this is fine, but I need to be more sure. So I'm going to go actually closer and choose a middle point. Right. And then have a 0.6 centimeter circle. 0.6 please. Okay. I'm going to type it. 0.6 centimeter. There. That's that. Now we want to basically draw a circle at the same exact point in the front. I mean, with this, with the center along the same line. So firstly finish this sketch and now rotate to the front. I mean, to the back. Right. And choose the back view on the cube if you want. And now draw a point. Say create sketch. Uh, okay. Um, I think we have to choose the right surface first. We're going to choose this surface and say create sketch. Right. And you want to create a point which is exactly along that point. So we're going to say create and choose a point and go right there. Right. And then create, um, that's just a point. We're not going to actually use that. We're going to draw a circle on, along that line, but a little bit higher up along halfway up. So I think three circles would be right. Yeah. Approximately there. And then just, um, complete your circle. It's height should be exactly. I mean, it's, it's, um, Top should be at the same height as the top of the uh, circle at the back. Enter. 
and that's going to give you a circle like this. Now ensure that the circle that you've drawn here is perfectly aligned with the center of this particular this cavity right over here right because that's how it is in gel sharpeners and if it's not then you're going to have a bit of a problem anyway so now we're going to basically choose this complete circle as one of our we're going to firstly finish the sketch then choose um create followed by loft and this is going to be one of our lines i mean one of our complete profiles this along with its other part which is currently not selectable we have to rotate a bit and get right to it there right and then um go to the back and select this one right we don't want this rail cross and we have it so press ok and we have a hole for a sharp for a pencil to go into right that's how it's going to look and i think it looks all right now what we need to do is we need to ensure that this circle is basically right along approximately along the center of that particular hole because otherwise it's going to create all sorts of problems so now what we're going to do is we're going to create the top the, the a trace of the top part and yeah let's go into top view and say create sketch choose this particular uh, body like choose this particular sketch itself that is a sketch of the uh, sharpener that we created earlier and then choose like the two point triangle which we're going to use to create the blade once you're done choosing a corner, always zoom out because that enables you to work a lot faster. Go to the bottom and then again zoom in maybe and choose a point which you think is at the corner of this complete mechanism. There. And now you can add a bit of fillet if you want. I'm going to add it to this corner at least. So fillet and well, use that. That does it approximately right, a little bit less maybe, yeah, and say finish sketch, and that's the sketch of this particular blade. I shouldn't have pressed finish sketch, sorry. Then I just hit Control Z and we're back into the sketch, and now we want to create this complete, um, this complete gap that we want to create. So again, choose line and start from this point since we already have it. Go all the way till here. Similarly, where the top part starts, you don't have to be as precise, but I mean, it helps. It definitely creates a much better drawing if you do it. And move all the way down. Zoom out to do it faster. Go all the way till here, and then again, zoom in and decide on a line. I'm going to choose that one. And then go to here approximately where that line starts and then have it merge with that right so that's one and then hit escape and now we need to complete this at the top so let's create a line again starting from here zoom in go to here then again resume and go all the way to the top right don't click that tick mark that's basically nothing but the finish sketch button and that's going to leave you in a bit of trouble that's it right so that's our third thing and then hit escape that's going to create these two separate parts okay so this is the blade part and this is basically the cavity part i mean at least that's what i want to call it right so that's that and now um we have at least the top view of the sharpener now also remember to draw the circle for the screw so we're going to say center diameter circle and go approximately to the center of this i mean i honestly don't know where it is but i'm gonna kind of approximate it it doesn't need to be exact obviously because that image no one's going to be able to see it after the actual um, sharpener has been made in 3d so that's done and then you say finish sketch right 
and now you can actually remove this because we have all of the all of the lines that we really need to create the sharpener now what we want to do is first we want to make this blade um, go down a little bit and then make this part go down a little bit more than the blade has gone down and then what we want to do is we want to make the blade um, appear really sharp so let's get started so first we're going to choose this face and choose extrude and go down not up and do remember to choose the sharpener as i mean you can actually cancel that that's going to look like a proper screw if you don't do it so move it down minus 0.1 looks almost looks about right actually but don't do it right um that looks better and then again unhide that search four choose this then hit e and make it go down all the way all the way in the sense it should be uh, you should be able to see the hole from the front it should be now visible and yeah that's pretty much it and from the bottom as well it should be visible that is too much obviously because it's cutting through the bottom part maybe 0.2 is at, at, the, the, at the most the amount you should go down by I'm going to be okay with that so that's alright to me at least it looks okay and now what we want to do is we want to make the actual blade visible from the top part so we're going to basically go down here and bevel away I mean uh, chamfer away this particular edge so hit chamfer and in general tangent chain and uh, will be turned on and this chamfer type will be kept as uh, equal distance I've changed that to distance and angle and turned this one off right so then um, that basically gives you much more control over the chamfer like this so you can choose the angle at which it's going to happen right now it's 45 which is not what I really want I want it to be a much um, more gentle angle it happens much closer to the top I mean, I think even 45 really is fine. Even 60 is fine. That's the original. And this is how it would look after the shampoo. You basically see a really sharp blade in this case. And that's exactly what we want. We want a really sharp blade for our uh, sharpener. So that's all right. That's okay. And then we go to the top. Right. So now from the bottom we can see this however we still cannot really see a proper um you know color so let's add some color to this and also now we can hide this sketch four it's no longer needed so i'm going to select all of the faces which i want to be metallic or rather i'm going to select all of the faces which i don't want to be metallic first and just apply just put a yellow on all of the faces search yellow w this glossy yellow looks great light to the entire thing and now to all of the surfaces which i don't want to be yellow i'm going to select them one by one with the control button held down and move around if required a little bit not too much though and select this space control button still held down and there's this tiny sliver of a particular edge maybe over here no not really all right so with that let's apply this steel to it it's steel satin and that looks like a proper sharpener now another thing that many people might want to do is basically add a hole for this particular screw which goes down into the body of the plastic and we can actually create that pretty easily so i'm just going to show you that real quick let's extrude this and then create it Right, so we're going to hit extrude and make it go downwards. We can go down a little bit more. 0.4. Right, that removes everything, all traces of that. And then we can add the hole. So let's go here. Hole. And now we can literally choose anywhere. So now it will be a good idea to have our sharpness image over the top view. And just select a point. Pretty much. and choose the right location make it a bit bigger or smaller as you want you can zoom in and do that um right and you can actually change the size here by increasing this 
see 0.25 that's going to be his diameter oh no that's its length sorry um the diameter can be also changed um so this one but i think that's fixed because we're using a very specific iso metric profile you can actually change it using this stuff so 1.4 millimeters is going to create a bigger screw hole and so on so those are basically standards compliant and then you do that you can see the where exactly the hole is and then you can actually construct a hole with like proper threading and everything and that's what it has done you can see there's threads in there hit okay that's going to create a proper hole there All right so that's that this was the sharpener tutorial hope you learned something from this and well, you can even render this right now if you want and yeah see you in the next one i guess